Hey guys, what's up? Q and A on the video on um, training arms every day or any body part in particular that's lagging. Training every day to make it grow. Make sure you watch that video, otherwise you don't understand the stuff that I'm saying in this one. Um, but anyway, one question I got here. By the way, post your comments at the end of every video, and then when I do my Q and A's, I'm gonna you know read the comments and answer. So somebody says, how many exercises per body part do you recommend? So using this guy's example. Um, if you want to bring up your, I don't know, just pick a body part. Doesn't matter. Focus on only one. Because like I said, you're going to be training that, that muscle. You're just going to have your, your typical workouts for that muscle, right? So if you're trying to bring up your 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 triceps, for instance, you're going to hit your triceps on arm day. And you're going to hit them on when you're doing chest, when you're doing shoulders. So um, the frequency part, training it every day does not mean have a full-blown workout. I made a video about that. It doesn't mean have a full-blown workout. For that muscle every day, it simply means stimulate that muscle every day, right? As I tell, I tell people, if you're gonna train that muscle every day, don't go to failure every fucking day, right? Don't, it's, it's pointless. You're just trying to increase protein synthesis, right? And you're gonna do that by stimulating the muscle, putting somewhat, you know, some damage on it, and then um, eating, obviously. So all you really need, if you assuming you already have your, you know, a day to train that muscle, and you you use it in other movements. All you really need is one exercise. And I tell people to always pick an isolation movement for three reasons. Number one, uh, it's safer on your joints, right? Because if you're going to be hitting that muscle every day, you don't want to do compound movements, right? It's just going to, you know, not only it's going to put a toll on you, but it's going to affect your other workouts, but uh, it's going to be bad for your joints. Because you got to understand the more you train, the more chances of getting injured. With isolation exercise, that, that knocks that problem out of the way. As long as you're using, like, you know, like I said, use cables and machines. Because, like I said, you just want to stimulate the muscle, right? Number two, um, why you should use an isolation exercise is the reason why most people have a lagging body part is because they don't know how to activate them with the body part, right? The whole mind-muscle connection thing. It's not a myth, guys. If you don't know how to activate a muscle, it won't really grow. Because what happens is when you try to use the muscle, something else is going to come in and, and help out, right? If you have a lagging chest, then when you bench press, what's going to happen? Your, your front delts and your triceps is going to take over. If you have lagging lats, when you do pull downs or rows, your rail delts, your biceps are going to come into play. Isolation movements lets you focus on that on that, that muscle, that, that right angle, and improve it where it's lagging. So use an isolation movement. And the third reason, obviously, is... um. Uh, it's not taxing. It's not taxing on your central nervous system, right? So, for example, somebody trying to bring up his uh his arm, like his triceps. I always tell people, you want to bring up your arms. Focus on triceps. Triceps are the biggest part of the arm. Yes, biceps are also good, but when you have a big tricep, it adds a lot more. It's all about creating that illusion. Bodybuilding is all about creating an illusion. A big tricep makes your arm looks fucking huge. You can have a big bicep, but if you if you if you're standing from the side, and you can't see that. You know, like, not just the horseshoe, but, like, that long head, you know, poking out. You're going to look small. So, um, I would say for triceps, real pushdowns, right? You can't go wrong. It's not taxing on your central nervous system. It's not going to hurt your joints. And, you know, your other body parts won't really come into play as opposed to doing close weight bench or dips. So, just pick one exercise, right? You don't have to do a whole bunch of exercises. At the end of your workout, full body split, whatever you're doing, pick the muscle you're trying to bring up. You can do this at the beginning or at the end. Um... And just do do high rep sets, squeeze, whatever you got to do. Don't really count reps. Don't really count sets. Just get enough blood in there. You know, you want to create those new, you want to activate those neurological pathways, right, to cause the muscle to grow. You want to learn how to activate it. And you notice when your muscle finally blows up, you you grab, like, if you did it for triceps, for instance, you grab a weight and pff, your triceps will activate. It happened to everyone who tried this method for any, any muscle group, right? So um, try it out and... Let me know if uh, if it helps. I like people that always give back, right? So if it helps, do what everybody else did and, you know, message me back. Let me know, hey, this is work for me. This is not work for me. So, you know, I could do more research to find out. So far, the reason why I, I got, you know, ahead of a lot of people in this bro science theory is because of the feedback that I got. You know, when I first made the video, a lot of people tried it out, sent me pictures, sent me messages saying, wow, wow, this works. So I was able to figure out exactly you know, because like I said, the study hasn't been done on it yet. So right now it's pure bro science. But based on the feedback, we could really tell why it works, how it works, and this and that. So let me know if it works for you. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Next question.